a reading for you from beautiful little Bartow Hospital. Look, I have a room that's directly above it's directly above the entrance way. It's a Sunday, it's very quiet here. Not much action. And from my room I can see the Fort Fraser bicycle trail. And the little rest area that I like to stop at. <clears throat> a reading for you from my hospital room as if we were all together. Job chapter 14, starting in verse 10. But mortals die and are laid low. Humans expire, and where are they? As waters fall from a lake and a river wastes away and dries up, so mortals lie down and do not rise again until the heavens are no more. They will not awake or be roused out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath is past, that you would point me a set time and remember me. If mortals die, will they live again? All the days of my service I would wait until my release should come. You would call and I would answer you. You would long for the work of your hands. For then you would not number my steps. You would not keep watch over my sin. My transgression would be sealed up in a bag. And you would cover over my iniquity. But the mountain falls and crumbles away, and the rock is removed from its place. The waters wear away the stones. The torrents wash away the soil of the earth. So you destroy the hope of mortals. You prevail forever against them, and they pass away. You change their countenance and send them away. Their children come to honor, and they do not know it. They are brought low, and it goes unnoticed. They feel only the pain of their own bodies, and mourn only for themselves. Then Eliphaz answered, should the wise answer with windy knowledge and fill themselves with the east wind? Should they argue in unprofitable talk or in words which, which, words which they can, which can do no good? But you are doing away with the fear of God and hindering meditation before God. For your iniquity teaches your mouth. And you chose the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you and not I. Your own lips testify against you. Are you the firstborn of the human race? Were you brought forth before the hills? Have you listened in the counsel of God? And do you limit wisdom to yourself? What do you know that we do not know? What do you understand that is not clear to us? What do you know that we do not know? What do you understand that is not clear to us?
Job 15, verse 9. What do you know? That we do not know. What do you know, know, understand? That is not clear to us. Next, Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Here we go. Jacob, Yaakov. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he called that place Manaim, Mahanaim, Mahanaim. Jacob sent messengers before him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir. The country of Edom, instructing the messengers, thus you shall say to my Lord Esau, thus says your servant Jacob, I have lived with Laban as an alien and stayed until now, and I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male and female slaves, and I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I may find favor in your sight. The messengers returned to Yaakov, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he is coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him, and the flocks and herds and camels into two companies, thinking, if Esau comes to the one company and destroys it, then the company that is left will escape. He divided the people. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do, I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him. He may come and kill us all, the mothers with the children. Yet you have said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. So he spent that night there, and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 
200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milch camels and their colts, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. These he delivered into the hand of his servants, every drove by itself, and said to his servants, Pass on ahead of me and put a space between the drove and drove. He instructed the foremost, When Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you, To whom do you belong? Where are you going? And whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say, They belong to your servant Jacob. They are a present sent to my lord Esau, and moreover, he, Jacob, is behind us. He likewise instructed the second and the third, and all who followed the droves, you shall say the same thing to Esau when you meet him. And you shall say, Moreover, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he thought, I may appease him with the present that goes ahead of me, and afterwards I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present passed on ahead of him, and he himself spent that night in the camp. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob, Yaakov. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Yaakov, but Yisrael, for you have striven with God and with humans, and have prevailed. Then Yaakov asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket, because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle.